Conduit News Radio with Paul Harrell. Last week on the program, welcome back. We had a candidate for the special election up there in uh, Russellville area, District 16, Mr. Bob Bailey, a Republican running for the vacant seat of the late Senator uh, Greg Stanridge, who uh, passed away after a hard, uh, long fought battle with uh, cancer. And um, so we got this special election coming up. And there was an article written and we just mentioned Steve Bronner's name earlier. Uh, and I didn't, this is just a coincidence that it happened this way. You know, he's got his website, independent Arkansas, where he wrote about David couch, but he also has published, uh, over at, uh, talk business and politics, uh, talkbusiness.net. And he writes an article where most special election candidates favor Arkansas works. So, the interesting thing here before we get to that is that Senator Jim Hendred is quoted in the article as saying that right now, right now they are a voter too shy of being able to pass the funding for Medicaid expansion, Arkansas Works. Uh, that's why that quiz over at Conduit for Action earlier in this hour mentioned that you can separate out individual parts of the budget um, and vote up or down on it instead of just, you know, and of course, what, what will ASA do? What will other, what will Republicans do to fellow Republicans if they don't have the votes? Uh, well, of course they're going to, uh, claim that they want to, you know, close down nursing homes and throw people out of nursing homes and everything else. I mean, that's what they're going to do folks. This is a disaster. Um, it has been from day one. I would encourage the Arkansas general assembly to just, can we, can we stop? the division but can we do so based on principle and just do the right thing and kill this thing can we end this program we're going to save the state money if we do you know cindy gillespie finally admitted that if we end it the less people on the program the more money we save now so why not just end the whole thing and save a bunch of money and actually get to real tax reform real tax cuts Let's be able to fund our roads by not spending so much money on Medicaid expansion. What do you say? Come on, folks. Surely any objective measure, any objective look about what was done in 2013 has been, has put Arkansas in a position to where we can't actually accomplish any of the massive reforms we want to do, regulatory or tax, really just tax-wise. We can't accomplish those things because we're over leveraging ourselves we can't fund our roads because we've over leveraged ourselves we can't uh, adequately fund our prisons and keep criminals behind bars to keep the people of arkansas safe your vote to expand medicaid in this state or to continue funding it actually puts at risk uh the safety of our kansas because we can't adequately fund our prisons we can't we got people they're, they're getting out on parole when they should you know they're violent offenders and they should serve their time can we admit that this has obligated, this has completely destroyed? You know why we don't have tax cuts yet? Real, real tax cuts? Folks, the people of Arkansas started voting for Republicans in mass in 2010, and then 2012, and then 2014, and then 2016. And you're going to tell me we won't have real tax reform until 2019, if you, if you believe, Governor, which I don't believe him. I don't. They're going to try to protect the revenue flow to the government. They're not going to shrink spending. They're not going to shrink government to give you back more of it. They're not going to cut anything. They're actually probably going to find a way to give the government more money, but then tell you your taxes went down because they cut your income tax. What about eliminating the income tax altogether? Ever think about that? But see, that'd be too big for these people. Their heads would explode. The lobbyists, the, uh, uh, the, the, the special interests, everybody would be running around like chickens with their heads cut off because it'd be, it'd be actually bold ideas. It'd be bold leadership instead of just cutting around the edges. So here's the thing. We should just defund this thing. You should just absolutely defund it. And finally just say, you know what? We're tired of this little experiment. We're tired of the divisions that it's caused. And it's just, it's time to move on. Because it'd be best for the people of this state. It'd be best for the campaign promises that we make. If we just, it'd be best for the Republican Party. You want the Arkansas Republican Party to keep going down this road, that's fine. 
uh, but it's not going to it's not going to end well. Okay. There's there's no scenario. Like I said, I think they know that um, one way or the other, the people of Arkansas are going to get the government that they keep voting for eventually. And maybe you guys don't understand anything but losing power. Maybe that's what it's going to take. Maybe you're just going to have to start losing elections. But one way or the other, I mean, just just look at the political look at the political landscape in the future. Look at it. Take a look at it. Take some uh, take some educated guesses about where things are headed. You have Jan Morgan, that's a, a, an aggressive primary challenger. And you have Asa who is reacting to her point by point of what she says he's countering because he has a record to defend now. And he's following her around to Republican committee. If she goes to a Republican committee to speak, he's right behind her. Trying to undo the damage that she's caused because when she speaks, she speaks the truth about her own experience and what happened at the Marble Palace and how bad everything was, how politically calculating everything was. It's just really sad because you never really see an incumbent this much on the back foot. And that's what Asa is. He's very much on his back foot yeah, he really with this is. election because Jan is destroying him in certain places. And right. his his entire record is being shown for what it is. It's been his entire, like all of he's, all he's done in his time as governor is being destroyed and being crumbled. And all the words he's saying, all his carefully crafted language mm -hmm. is being exposed. And he's so on the back foot, he doesn't know what to do. Well, and, and they've tried to go on offense before this happened, before she announced. One of the ways, so one of the governor's nephews, Jim Hendren, um, and I don't like to mention this too often because I it was just a lot of fun, to quite honestly, to ignore. Um, but so... Conduit for Commerce came out with a scorecard, and all these people that were in lockstep with the governor's agenda got low scores because they proposed tax increases, they passed tax increases, uh, and, and, and there's a ton of bills that were scored. And so, get this, it wasn't just Conduit for Commerce's scorecard. You also had the Family Council scorecard, where they scored a lot of Asa lockstep, you know, who are just worshiping the R at the end of his name. They got bad scores and it's the family council. Oh, I'm always a social conservative. Well, no, you're not. Not according to your votes. This, these were the votes. And so what did that do? That prompted the governor's nephew, number one, Jim Hendren, to come out with a scorecard of the scorecards. Now, he only did this for one reason. Maybe two, but he did this for one reason, which was to try to keep the troops in line because you see, they did what they were told. They towed the line of Asa Hutchinson in the, in the mouthpieces, and yet they got bad scores because of it. And that made them very nervous. Do you know why? Because it reminded them, wow, I could potentially lose power. I could get voted out of office for these votes. So can you imagine how ridiculous it is? We, you actually, you tell somebody that this has happened. So you have a senator who didn't like the scores he got. So he, he spends a month or two scoring the scores. It's like, well, this is ridiculous. This is like, it's so ridiculous. It's, uh, uh <laughs> I mean, you know, it's, uh, it's, it'd be just like trying to referee yourself. It's, it's like, no, you're, you're in power. We actually have to, you actually have power and we have to live under the decisions you make. And here are these independent groups American Conservative Union was one of them. Here are these independent groups that are scoring what you did, and you're saying, oh, I'm going to score them. Your scorecard is flawed. I'm, I get to make, I'm my own person. Anyway, so they've made some, they've made some efforts already to try to shore up the loyalty to Governor Asa Hutchinson and the absolute fealty at all costs. they got to support our guy. You got to support the party leader. You know why? Because the Central Committee demands it. The Central Committee demands we support our leader at all costs because he's the governor and has an R at the end of his name. Bow down. So, anyway, this article is very important. Jim Hendren says they may be a voter too, a voter too short to reauthorize, right? And so 
what about Senate District 16? What about this special election? Let's just take it, take this for example. You have three candidates. You have Bob Bailey, who we've interviewed. You have a guy by the name of Luke Heffley. These are the Republican candidates. I've reached out to Luke Heffley on Facebook, and I haven't seen any message back. I've tried to get him on the program. I had an interview scheduled with the other Republican opponent here, uh, Breanne Davis, and she was scheduled like the couple Fridays before Christmas, and she canceled. It was a Wednesday, and I got a text from her, uh, and she canceled. Uh, and and said she had something come up and that she was going to get in touch with me uh, in at the you know first of the year and haven't heard anything elections coming up so I had Bob Bailey on a couple times I had him on last week and I asked Bob I said Bob there's a there's a war going on at the Marble Palace and it's all about who's more loyal to the governor or to your constituents and I said. Are you the establishment candidate? Because I, I promise you, out of these three Republicans, there's at least one of them who is an establishment guy, who's an establishment candidate, who's going to be loyal to Asa uh, and try to protect the status quo. And Bob Bailey said, no, that's not me. Well, I have evidence to support Bob Bailey's claim on the program last week um, because they specifically asked this, this entire article by Steve Bronner at Talk Business and Politics. The headline is, Most Special Election Candidates Favor Arkansas Works. You know the one candidate that doesn't favor Arkansas Works? A Bob Bailey. So it talks about Luke Heffley, okay? Luke Heffley, a GOP candidate and an Arkansas Tech University employee, said Arkansas Works should continue. This is Steve Bronner. Uh, as for the waiver request, he said the ceiling should remain at 138% of the federal poverty level. However, the work requirements that Arkansas has requested and the qualifications or stipulations for those who meet the waiver criteria seems fair to me, end quote. Then you have uh, Republican Breanne Davis, who is a uh, Russellville Republican, a senior account executive for SAS Institute, a global analytics company, said she opposes Obamacare but would keep Arkansas works. Now, she... <laughs> Boy, that is that is uh, strikingly similar to uh, other candidates that have supported Obamacare in the past, but say that they don't support Obamacare. I, I can't help but make that observation because I've uh, this is not my first rodeo, folks, especially on this issue. She writes, I think it's hard to just rip something out, she said. I think you need to make sure you do it in a way that you've got solutions in place. Oh, okay. You know, that's like the repeal and replace everybody was voting for repeal and then the republicans came back and said no no replace replace i got gotcha. you uh but here there's only one candidate that says uh says no and that's bob bailey uh steve bronner writes that bob bailey of russellville a retired energy employee and owner of bailey signature firearms said he is opposed to arkansas works quote arkansas works in its present form is unsustainable Therefore, I do not support it. He said, no, I would not vote for a DHS appropriation. I do not support the Medicaid waiver. So in the Senate 16, uh, we can report it now. I would have loved to have had, I, I still would love to have both of these candidates on, the other two, and talk more about this. But we can now report, according to Steve Bronner, Talk Business and Politics, he says that of the three in the special election in Senate District 16, of those three Republican candidates, two of them support the status quo in continuing Arkansas Works, Obamacare, Medicaid expansion, and one, Bob Bailey, says he does not. So, I don't know. You guys in Senate District 16, I appreciate all of y'all listening on KARV in that area it's up to y'all i mean you be the judge we've got a program for able to work adults who don't work and are on this program and many of you out there listening right now are driving to work and your taxpayer dollars are going to fund this monstrosity and now you're going to get to decide in a special election what candidate you want and um anyway hopefully we'll have bob bailey on again soon hopefully we'll have brianne davis and luke heffley on because I'd really like to talk to them about this stuff. We've got serious questions to ask about what their philosophy is. 
And do they do do they know? I mean, we've talked to Bob Bailey several times. He knows what his philosophy is. But do these other two candidates really know? Like, what's their philosophy in government? Um, what's their favorite book on economic policy? You know what I mean? Like, what what do they what make you know what makes them tick? How are they going to what are they going to do to 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 you know interpret the data, analyze results to make their votes? Or is it easier just to say, well, I'll figure out when I get there or, you know, I'm going to listen to the governor. I'm going to do exactly what the governor says. You see, the reason I know at least one of these candidates is completely in the tank for the governor is because that's how the governor operates. He's always going to make sure he has somebody as a placeholder to execute his agenda. And, for example, you know, over in Independence County, his yes man is James Sturch, State Representative James Sturch, who walked out and killed special election reform. He is challenging Senator Linda Collins Smith because Senator Linda Collins Smith is one of the most conservative politicians we have in the entire state. And he and she votes against Ace's agenda. If you vote against Ace's agenda, he finds you a primary opponent. He did this last year or two years ago. One, one of the most conservative state representatives in the House of Representatives is Josh Miller. State Representative Josh Miller votes against the governor agenda. He had a primary opponent two years ago, and he beat him. Dan Sullivan, State Representative Dan Sullivan, one of the most conservative voting records in the entire state. And guess what? He now has a primary opponent that Governor Hutchinson supports, uh, who is va who is getting all of this money from the medical community because Dan Sullivan is actually speaking up for uh, more freedom in the healthcare industry and not the the control and the guaranteed flow of taxpayer money to to support uh, businesses and stuff and, and such. So anyway, you can see a clear pattern here, and this is why so many people uh, are, are are wary. If if you if you only care about your own personal political power and ego and status and approval that you're desperately seeking, then it means something if somebody says, well, the governor will find you a primary opponent if you don't vote this way. That 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 can shock people to their core if they're not really sure of who they are. And that's what we're facing down there. That's the kind of environment. That's the kind of environment that was down there when Governor Beebe was there, and it's still the environment now when Governor Hutchinson is there. Man, wouldn't it be amazing if you had a governor that took care of, of the executive responsibilities that he or she had and then allowed the legislature to actually legislate it said you guys are the people's representatives we're, we're we're going to just let the process play out instead of trying to control everything with a task force or, 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 or instead of trying to control the legislature with your relatives and your nephews. Wouldn't it be amazing to just let the people's voice work? And just let the chips fall where they may? Folks, if they did that, you understand the kind of government we would have? You wouldn't have a fear of writing a bill because the governor may have to veto it and look bad. The entire four years or three years has been orchestrated in a way so that the governor doesn't look like he's not a conservative because he knows if the people find out he's not, which he isn't, he'll get a primary opponent. Well, guess what? He has one, Jan Morgan. We'll see what happens. I wonder where the governor's going next. I guess we just need to look up where Jan Morgan's been, and then we'll know. We got to take a break. Back in a minute. Who's next to Zipline? Me, and I'm really excited about this. Uh, sir, I'm sorry. The Zipline has a 350 pound weight limit, and frankly, I do not think it would be safe for you. Oh, that's okay. I self identify as 180 pounds, so it's cool. Sir, that doesn't make any sense to me and I'm afraid we can't let you ride the zip line you're too heavy I'm sorry I can't believe this I thought we had evolved as a society I thought this was America but I guess this is just my plight first slavery and now fat shaming sir again I'm really sorry 
You listen to me. If you don't let me ride, not only will I sue this company for discrimination, I will sue you for damages because right now my feelings are so hurt and I feel embarrassed because I'm holding up the line. Wouldn't be the first time. Watch it, mister. Look, look, okay, I'm sorry. I just don't think it would be safe for you. You don't understand. I self-identify as skinny. So you have to let me ride the zip line. The Constitution says so I get to define my own reality. Oh, you know, okay, fine, whatever. Ride the zip line. Mike, let this man ride the zip line. Thank you. Now watch as my self-identity trumps your bigotry. See you on the other side, racist. Here I go! Doctor, thank goodness. What's the prognosis? Sir, we've done everything we can, and you only have seconds to live. No, you cannot say that. I do not self-identify as a dead person. PHP Parody Conduit News Radio with Paul Harrell is building a liberty machine. Find out more at conduitnews.com. Not surprisingly, <laughs> uh, my phone kind of blew up here when I went to break. Um, so where is Governor Asa Hutchinson going next? Well... On January 23rd, he will be at the Craighead County Republican uh, Committee meeting um, at 6.30 at the Western Sisland. It is open to the public. Uh, so that